All right, secrets to case acceptance. This is where we left off. And really, um, we're, we're getting into uh, more meat and potatoes for you. Uh, because this is really important stuff to talk about. And really, um, I, I put this slide in here because I hope, I hope you all can kind of see that at this point, this is what I view the doctor's role in uh, exams. Can somebody read that for those in the back? Oh, hang on. Just because you're necessary doesn't mean you're important. That is the role of the doctor in the exam process. Necessary, but hopefully we've established how the team, sorry, how the team can actually influence the result of the exam far more effectively than the doctor can. Does that make sense? Of course the doctor's an important part. Of course the input's valued, but hopefully the doctor's not having to do much of the selling at all. We want most of that to be done before the doctor gets in the room, and we've kind of established that a little bit, and now we're just going to kind of summarize how um, to kind of take it the rest of the way. Okay? 65% of all restorative production is referred from the hygiene department. And that's why we focus so much time on the hygienist role and the hygiene assistance role and the auxiliary role in this process. It's because a good amount of our production comes from hygiene. Okay? Um, so we do need to be the ones to help advise our patients on the full range of services we have that will benefit them. Is there anything else interfering? Is that it? Oh, there we go. Good grief. <laughs> Microphones. We got it now? Oh, the chair. Sorry. I'm like, I don't see a chair block in the projector. <laughs> Better? Okay. All right. So that is, that is one of our key roles. And, uh, you know, you guys have all heard me talk about the role of the hygienist as a periodontal therapist, the role of the hygienist as a preventive therapist. Um, but again, we also are kind of a restorative counselor for our patients, and we help them determine, you know, what's the full range of possibilities for you to help you get what you want. Okay, so the old paradigm for case presentation. Ed talked about that a little bit this morning. What, did, what were we told we needed to do to get patients to accept treatment? In the past, what do we think? Educate. Educate, 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 right? Um, over education was how we thought we would sell dentistry. And I have some really great clips. Um, <laughs> you guys want to laugh. Go Google um, ballpark root canal. There's a guy that sets up a dental chair in the middle of a ballpark and does a root canal uh, right there in the middle of the ballpark. And just to hear him describe what he's doing is actually laughable. So the old paradigm for case presentation was this stuff. You know, if we could get life-size models of a tooth and show the patient what happens when the nerve's destroyed, and let's section it, and let's do all that. Are, are they going to understand what the heck we are talking about when we're going through all of that? But that's what we were taught to do, right? Over-educate the patients. Have the whole drawer full of little example bridges and crowns on the models so the patients can see what we're talking about when we do it. You know, if we're still presenting treatment that way, it could very well be that the purpose of your life is only to serve as a warning to others. Okay, and the whole point with that is if we're still doing case presentation and case acceptance that way and explaining procedures, your patients don't need to know how to do a root canal in order to accept one or in order to have one. They really don't need to know that we actually, you know, flip the bracket table over, draw them a picture of the tooth and the damage that's been done to the nerve and then we ream the canals. They don't want to know that. All right, so if we're still doing that, um, we're probably not getting the results that we're looking for still. So if you really want to change your case acceptance, you've got to change your paradigm. The new paradigm is to build value. And I know I've, I've referred to this a lot and I've talked with you about this a lot already today, how we actually build value. What's in it for me? What are the benefits to me? But this is really the key right here. Simplify. We've got to simplify. Okay, buying decisions are made emotionally. What do you feel emotionally when you're confused? Is it a nice feeling to be overwhelmed? So ultimately, when you leave the office, what kind of uh, memory or what kind of emotional trigger do you have with that? It's negative, right? So we don't want to overcomplicate things for our patients. We've got to make sure 
that they have the logic they need to justify their decision. That's why we use the diagonal dent. That's why we use the camera. Because those are logical triggers. Okay? But we've got to make sure that they have plenty of benefits. Plenty of value attached with whatever product or service that we're recommending for them. So, you know, when we talk about the type of dentistry your patients are coming to you to accept, um, dentistry really has moved from a needs-based to a wants-based uh, profession. More than 90% of what we're doing today in dentistry is considered discretionary treatment. So telling patients what they need anymore really isn't going to be as effective as finding out what they want and helping them get it. Okay, what's in it for me? What are the specific benefits to the patient with that particular service? If we're talking about a root canal, instead of saying, you know, the nerve's infected, all that tissue's necrotic, it's dying, so we're going to take it, we're going to ream the canals, we're gonna, you know, say, your tooth isn't going to hurt anymore. The pain will go away. You'll be able to chew over there again. And guess what? It's going to look beautiful. That's what they need to know. Why do they need implants? You're going to be able to chew over there again. It's going to feel like a natural tooth again. You're not going to have to take out anything at night. You can floss between the teeth. You know, these are the benefits. This is what patients really want to know. Why should I do this? Tell me what's in it for me. We just um, had Dr. Braverman's office share with us how well they've done since the bonus. Why do you think that is? What's in it for me? Okay, now obviously, um, when we talk about, it, it's difficult to list the benefits for every specific procedure here with you, but I, I think you guys can kind of understand where we're going. Okay, I love this right here. Um, to ride the aesthetic wave, have your patients tell you what they want to change about their smile or about their teeth. This is not a have to do, so my advice is listen to your patients Quit telling them what to do. Find out what they want. Now, of course, we still need to make recommendations when we see problems, right? But again, instead of saying you need to have this root canal because it's infected, why not transition that? If you want to keep your teeth healthy for the rest of your life, this is what I'm going to recommend for you. If we do a root canal, the pain goes away. You can chew over there again, and it's going to look great. It changes the whole dialogue. And all of a sudden, patients who want treatment um, are going to be more likely to get it because they've discovered that they want it. And you know what? They really didn't know that they wanted it before because no one ever told them why they should. No one ever told them why they should want to have this done. No one really ever clarified what was in it for them. Okay, and we've got to really get away from using complicated language. Um, making complicated things simple is so important. 